Hey everybody, it's Ryan Bailey. Uh, this is our little humble abode. So we're not in the studio today, we're at home working. It's a work day. Uh, practiced already this morning, but I wanted to do a video for you on Ushrasana, camel pose, some secrets that uh, you may have not known about, and so I want to share them with you. Uh, a couple props you might want to use is a block, any kind of block. I like the foam ones. Uh, rather than the wood just out of personal preference the other thing that I feel like a lot of people don't know about that Would really help like camel pose is a camel pack. I Know that maybe the ancient yogis like they didn't have like this kind But I feel like they had a little something to help them, you know, because you do a lot of yoga and you get thirsty And I always like wonder if I'm in yoga class and I had a camel pack It'd be so much easier like down dog and like be able to take a sip of water while I'm doing it. So um, Yeah so we'll strap up and see what happens. All right, so the first thing you wanna do, I'm a huge fan of using the block uh, between the inner thighs. And so if it's somewhat new to you, you curl the toes under and you're really working on gripping the block with the inner thighs. Oh, please make sure that you buckle up for safety. This can be dangerous, okay? So you squeeze in. Uh, next position would be like hands placed on the lower back. Uh, a common misconception, because we put the hands here, is that we want to drive the hips forward. and Ultimately, we don't really want the hip bones too far past the knees, um, especially, again, if you're a beginner. You want to get a little bit more traction, so the tailbone scoops under a tiny bit, and you activate the glutes to lengthen, because you want to create decompression of the spine, so you want to create a little space between the discs and the vertebrae. So you're coming up and back, and that could be it. Now, you want to be mindful that you don't put too much water in your camel pack because it will like pull you back. So just put a couple sips in there to start. And then as you get more advanced, you can fill it all the way up. And then you can use the weight to kind of help you come back. Okay. All right, so the block's a great tool. Maybe second step, you untuck the toes and go from hands from the low back, maybe to take a bind, right? And just don't squeeze too much because you might squeeze too much water. And so you lift up and back and maybe you do a few rounds, right? So this pose you don't want to dive right into. Uh, maybe take the block out. Uh, what can be nice is to do some cat-cow. So loosen the spine, maybe between rounds. Okay. And then, like if you get thirsty, you can take a sip. See, it's like super convenient. Okay, so hands are gonna now reach back as you squeeze the block. There is length first to go up, then to come back. If you catch, then you try to push forward again. When you come up, you wanna try to bring everything up at the same time. Um, one other little trick uh, that can be nice is to uh, set the shoulders up first um, to kind of catch the head and the neck so that it doesn't go too far back. So in your preparation, whatever your hand position is, uh, if you're going to go all the way back, you can pull the shoulders up to the ears a little bit first so you have a little shelf so that when you go all the way back, you can set the head back. Okay? And then you just you stay hydrated because this can be a dangerous game. I'm in the sun today and uh, yeah, I want to always stay hydrated. So if you're in like a hot yoga studio, we use radiant heat panels, so uh, it can get a little toasty at this time of year. So I appreciate you watching. I hope you learned a little something, but you know, safety, you know, buckle up, stay hydrated, use your props, and just like warm up into it. All right? Okay, have a good day.